With the disappointment of being so close in 1980 behind him, Brad's championship seasons are running out. 1981 would set the stage of what it would take to fulfill a 10-year goal. I was pretty much looked at as maybe over the hill by most of the guys that I wasn't really ever going to make the world championship and uh, Suzuki still had some thoughts that I was still in the hunt and uh, I got a ride with Suzuki for 81 and 82, a two-year deal. They were uh, quite interesting. They had, uh, I, be I believe their philosophy was that they built the bike, you're the rider and ride it. They hadn't really been in the 500 class since Roger DeCoster's win in 75, so their bikes were pretty much five years behind. Again, mechanical frustrations on the new Suzuki and then an injury with a broken foot would provide motivation to Brad and his hand-picked team not to let the next season slip by like so many others without a championship. They were willing to listen, but uh, maybe didn't change as quick as we needed to change, so we had to take a few things into our own hands. The companies do the shocks or the forks, and you know, you have to fight with those guys too to try to get things worked out. At the beginning of the 82, uh, season when we got to Paris, that's where we all met up and uh, we had brought along what we had been working on uh, during the off season. It, it was what it was. Um, it was a couple things that they didn't like that were very visual. They were in the management somewhere, came up and uh, just asked Brad to take the forks off and then uh, after he refused they cornered me and told me that I shouldn't be allowing him to use the fork and that I was interfering with their business. I said, do you want to go win the race, the world championship, or do you want to lose? And the engineer told me, we lose, take it off. And I said, sorry, I'm winning. I don't care what you guys do, I'm going to go win. The years I've been coming over, I've been improving, you know, slowly, but a little bit more each time. So I hope, uh, you know, last year I would finish fifth and I hope to do better this year. So. If I keep increasing, you know, I have to be at least in four more years first. So. The Motocross Files has been brought to you by Lucas Motorcycle Oils. It works. Troy Lee Designs for the world's fastest racers. With his equipment performing where he wanted it, Lackey's 1982 strategy of consistent podium finishes was beginning to pay off. By the USGP of Carlsbad, he was leading against another Belgian, Suzuki teammate Andre Vromans. And going out at Carlsbad, I had a 20-point uh, a lead on him with Canada, England, Belgium, and Luxembourg to go. The gap closes after the British round, but Lackey still holds the lead. The series heads to Namur in Belgium, Roman's home turf. And now we're 10 points away and we're going to Belgium, which is the mirror, which is dangerous as hell track. And it's just real sketchy through the woods at 100. And it's not my favorite place. I hate it, basically. Brad would ride conservatively in front of a nationalistic Belgian crowd, allowing Romans the win, but now a narrowed lead of only four points. So now we're down to like, I think it was four or six points going into the last round at Luxembourg. And I felt real confident. I knew I, I knew I had him won there. Whatever it took to get there was my job. Nothing could beat the day that he won the world championship. We had been over there for 10 years working really hard. So Andre Vromans, uh, a Belgian in the hunt to win. And I felt real confident. I knew I, I knew I had him won there. But I also had the problem with the spectators throwing shit at you, hitting you over the head. Somebody reached out and clubbed uh, Graham Noyce and he, he broke his arm in the race, just going down one of the back straightaways, uh, taking him out to get Andre up in, the, up in the pack. So I had to let him win the race and me stay completely back the whole moto until the very end of the last few laps and then catch him and pass him. Maybe we don't get there, but the Dean's strategy with the with lap times and, and who faded when and, and knew and when we could come on strong. We had a plan all set up for this. I've been checking, we, my trainer Dean, he'd been checking every lap time of every rider for the last five races. We had every guy's lap time from start to finish in both two 45 minute motos and we knew each guy, how many seconds he slows down into the race and what, what point and everything. Uh, I think every call on the pit board was again, keep stick to plan. I let him go 27 second lead and I had to wait till there was five laps left. As it gets closer and you start seeing that two lap flag and what have you, the adrenaline starts flowing and you know your chance for error uh, 
is much greater. Sitting there killing myself, dying, you know, going, he's 27 now, are you crazy? We can't win. So I'm, I said, Dino, show me when it's five laps. So when it's five laps, I'm going. So I pinned it, I caught him, I passed him with a half a lap to go, and he was crying. So he didn't know I was coming like that. So I won that moto, he got second, and that just killed him, you know. And then my lead went up a little bit more, but I still had to finish the race. All I had to do was finish in front of him or right behind him, I, I would have won. And he screwed up at the start, and I just cruised around in third place, and he never caught me, so that was it. In the end, it panned out, but uh, if, if you would have told me that the first race, that was our approach, uh, I would have had a hard time. But the, the last Grand Prix, it, it, it made sense, but we knew there was a lot on the line, and if it didn't work, um, would have been second again. Nothing could probably ever top that day. That was really a big highlight. After 10 years, Brad Lackey had become America's first motocross world champion, but in 1983, he was left without a sponsor as Suzuki ended their championship effort. I was not at all jealous of the fact that he was the first American to win a, a championship that week. I was really proud, actually. Brad Lackey's your, your James Dean of motocross. I mean, come on, I mean, he was a, he was a rebel. He knew what he was doing. You know, he knew what he wanted, he knew what he was doing, and he didn't let anybody stand in his way. It was a new sport to the United States, and you had somebody just sign up for that tour of duty. As long as you have a goal in life, like I did for, you know, winning the world championship, then everything else is easy.